background behind our project is that we are all surfers. Um, we are, that's, that's our love, going out in the water, um, being out, out there and, and making sure it's healthy. So that's kind of the, the motivation behind this project. Uh, the first one is surfing, of course. We're gonna make an artificial surfing reef um, that is gonna produce the perfect wave, the perfect peeling wave. Um, the second goal is to create a thriving ecosystem um, within our artificial reef. So the reef will be made out of um, concrete with crushed coral, something like that to help promote uh, coral growth as well as fish populations. And then the last one is beach erosion. Uh, beach erosion is a billion dollar industry all over the world, um, especially in Florida, that's where a lot of your tax dollars go, is to bring sand back on the beach after these storms come through. Um, so our artificial reef is actually going to help limit the amount of beach erosion that happens behind our structures. So the artificial surfing reef would be broken down into the benefits section of this. And we found, uh, we were trying to tap into this $50 billion industry uh, worldwide and um, we broke it down into these four sections here which is uh, apparel, uh, traveling, boards, and then the local businesses around the area. Uh, if we do do this in our location over here in Melbourne it would attract more uh, you know more business in, in the area and you know boosting the apparel and people would travel here to go come see it. Uh, more boards would be sold and uh, reef values nowadays is big $375 billion worldwide and locally here in Florida it's a $8.4 billion industry you know that's split up between uh, scuba diving, fishing, uh, you know just and tours of you know the reefs and everywhere um, so with ours it would put that here and four major issues with our project the first one being storms is as we can design this project and put it in the ocean there can be many different storms such as strong cold fronts or hurricanes that can actually destroy the project longer than what we expected to last for. This will cause a very variable um, aspect in our economic timeline as the project may not last as long as we expect it to. The second issue we have is sand coverage and that kind of plays along with the storm aspect is we can have a lot of sand being deposited on top of the reef and that's a very hard perimeter measure and it's also very unpredictable. And if this were to occur, we could lose a lot of the coral reef that would have grown on top of our artificial reef. And then another aspect is permitting. Uh, to overall design the project and get it implemented into the ocean, you have to go through a lot of red tape and a lot of permitting through the, the county and the local governments. And uh, this, would, this would cause a lot, of, a lot of time to spend in the development process. So your income would take a couple of years to even start occurring. Um, this could make it a little bit harder for your overall profit to occur in a shorter time span. And then the long-term effects is another major issue of our project. Um, as the unpredictability of the ocean occurs, we can have a lot of different effects that can damage the project or maybe even help it. We are not too sure, maybe long-term, a beach down further will get another artificial reef or maybe we'll have a large sandbar form and the reef won't be as good as other spots losing tourism. So it's very difficult to predict what may happen in the long-term future scale of things. So to obtain the optimal shape, overall length, height of our reef, we had to do, or we were planning on doing testing uh, with a scaled down model of the reef to get the bleeding edge shape, different uh, angles, different height of the blocks, different overall length of the reef to get uh, maximum dissipation uh, to help reduce the uh, shoreline erosion. Uh, we're also going to do material testing to find the optimal um, mixtures of concrete and crushed coral, concrete and limestone to help promote coral growth um, in this area in the environment of Melbourne Beach. Uh, and then implementation, uh, we are going to get a barge with the pre-made uh, concrete segments and uh, they're going to be brought out there and we're going to use a crane and place them into the water. It should take about six months um, to get um, from the beginning of the project to the end of the project uh, once we get into the building aspect and actually putting it out there. Expectations of our project is to create the perfect surfing wave. That is one of them. Wave where you can just drop in, go down the line, hit the lip, <laughs> get pitted, come out, just like Christian is in this video right here. There's also the second phase is to have a living ecosystem where we will have a fully thriving reef um, out there for snorkelers, scuba divers, fishermen, 
uh, tourists from all over to go check out. Uh, and then the last one is to help reduce that beach erosion because it is such a big issue, um, especially with uh, sea level rise, stronger storms coming up, and et cetera. This project, we have a couple of little issues and a couple really large benefits for the overall design and aspect. So our first few issues we have is mainly the issue of uncertainty. We have a large concern with the amount of people at tourism. It's very hard to actually predict the exact number of people that are going to come and surf this reef. And we also have the issue of the design conditions. As the ocean is unpredictable, you can't completely accurately model the ocean. You don't know if there will even be waves. You don't know if a big storm will destroy the reef within a year or in a hundred years. And to follow from that, we have a lot of main benefits that the reef will provide. It will provide a lot of money to the industry in the area around the uh, surfing reef, as it will bring in more tourism, um, more need for surfboards, more need for clothes to surf in, and more need for restaurants to feed people that come and surf on the reef. We also have a long-term structure, so when the project is implemented, it will be there for a very long time regardless of storms. Even if it does get destroyed, it will still have some effect on the surfing ability of the area. Um, but mainly, we'll have more step. Another aspect that is can be considered invaluable to some people is the um, benefit and the environment. If, if having an artificial reef will provide a lot of habitat for fish and marine life and also help grow corals in the ocean to help sustain a healthy and happy environment for 